Hi guys, today I'm going to go over how to configure a USB device to be bootable for Fedora Linux. So I'm doing your latest distribution, Fedora 24. It's a great product to try and it's completely compatible, binary compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So if you're interested in that product and want something free at home, definitely give this a try. So I'm going to show you how to set this up on a USB device for both a live demo, so you can run it live, which means, which means it has nothing to do, nothing will be done on your hard drive and it's completely running off the USB device and memory and actually once you restart your machine nothing has been changed on your physical system or you could actually go through it and do the installation so I'll show you how to make a USB device and use it for both of those situations so after you go ahead and give it a try in a live demo which has a full functional browser full office and you can even install additional applications from the Fedora App Store which is fully loaded give that a try and then if you like it you go back and use the same USB device and install Fedora Linux on your hard drive and again then you get to enjoy it every single day Fedora is a completely free product, so you just go to the Fedora website, get fedora.org, and you've noticed they have three options here, workstation, server, and cloud. I'm going to be working on workstation today, so Fedora 24 beta is out for review, so let's go ahead and download that. If you notice, there is a 32-bit and a 64-bit option. Most machines will support 64-bit nowadays, but if you have an older laptop that you're testing this on, you might have to download that 32-bit. So now let's go to fedorahosted.org and we're going to down, download Live USB Creator, the Windows version. This will be in the notes. We're going to plug in our USB device into our laptop. Again, this is the laptop we're going to create the USB from. So it's not the one we're going to install necessarily. So we're going to run the installer for the Live USB Creator. It's a very fast installation and we're going to bring up the GUI. So here the GUI, we have a few options. We select our target location, which is our USB device. In my case, it's the G drive, but it could be a different letter for you. You could select the live CD, so that's the ISO we downloaded, so we go ahead and select that. Or you can actually download Fedora from here, but unfortunately it only has older versions of Fedora. Now let's go ahead and browse to where we download our Fedora ISO in our downloads folder. We're going to select it, and then we're going to click open. This is going to go ahead and bring it up in the utility. Next we just have to click create live USB. In my case, I, got, uh, I had to reform my USB device. Not always required, I just happen to have a different file system type than they were expecting. Please back up your USB device uh, just in case. They say you shouldn't reformat it, but just in case, I would always back up any files before doing something like this, creating a live USB. It should just take a few minutes to complete. You'll see the progression bar on the screen, say so extracting live image to USB device. Once it's done, you can go ahead and eject your USB device, and we can go ahead and start installing or running live our Fedora installation. Once we go ahead and plug it into the laptop, we're now going to install Fedora on. You're going to want to boot uh, off the USB device, so you have to bring up the boot menu. Some machines, the hotkey might be slightly different, F12, F9, um, maybe Escape, F2 are some common. Uh, buttons to press to bring up the boot menu. You can go into the BIOS and change the boot menu option as well. So once you do that, it will bring you up to the Fedora installation menu. You really only get two options here. Is start Fedora Workstation Live 24-bit beta or test this media and start. So um, I would usually just go ahead and start. If you're worried about the download, go ahead. If this is a production environment, try to test it first. So I'm just went with the first option. I'm going to start with the live. Um, it says try Fedora. So this is great if you just want to try without making any modifications to your hard drive. This is a great way to try Linux with no commitment whatsoever. So I highly, highly recommend trying that if you are brand new to a Linux environment. you I think you'll fall in love with it myself. But go ahead and try it before maybe you do the installation. Then you can go come back and go ahead and do the install if you like it. Just realize if you do the try, it makes no modifications to your hard drive. It runs completely off memory and the USB device. And then once you do the installation, it will reformat your hard drive. So just be careful when you're doing that step. So I'm going to go ahead and click on install hard drive. And it's going to start the installation wizard. This is actually very simple. First, it's going to prompt you for what language. It has a number of languages from all around the world. So you go ahead and select your language. This is an unstable version. So it's a beta release. So it's just giving a warning. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept my fate. And it's going to go ahead and continue with the installation. Uh, the installation wizard is very simple. It's just going to ask us these four questions, our keyboard time. So let's select our keyboard type. If you're not sure, you go ahead and type in, and it'll try to recognize what keyboard type you have. Next, we'll select the date and the time zone. Installation location. So we're going to select our hard drive. And you can either select to um, 
do over uh, more advanced network solutions, storage solutions, or you can just select the local hard drive. I'm going to select the local hard drive. This is what most people are going to do, but I'm going to choose to configure my own partitions. If you're not sure, you can still click that other radio button for automatically select. There's some options here for which file system type. So I'm going to use the logical volume manager. This is allows us some flexibility in configuring it later to adjusting, expanding the size. Uh, for any Linux distributions, there's four required uh, file systems that must exist. Slash, slash boot, and swap. So those are the three that have to be created. And you see me here making them one by one. Um, so just from experience, you kind of roughly know the size. Memory um, kind of gives you an idea of how big swap should be, slash. I mean, hard drives nowadays are huge, so. Uh, slash boot, usually around 500 megabytes is the minimum. So you can select a different file system. EXT4 is the default file system for Fedora at the moment. That might change to XFS, I hear from some people. But we're going to go ahead and select that, and we'll select our changes to our file system. We're going to name our system. This is our host name. Depending on your environment, if you're doing this on some kind of network, you might need to add a DNS entry. If this is like a home test, um, then you don't necessarily need to do that. It'll go ahead and um, connect to your Wi-Fi later. So we're going to go ahead and start our installation. While we start our installation, it has to ask us a couple more questions about the root password. This is the admin account. And we're going to create a non-root user. So I'm just going to select data. I could choose to give it SUD rights. I could add it to the wheel group. And you can also specify the UID and group ID number. If you're not sure what those are, don't worry about it. It's not necessary to use to know what those are to use Fedora. Uh, they're just some uh, configurations for users, more specific configurations. So once we're done, go ahead, go ahead and click quit. It puts us in the Fedora Live install here. So you can actually use it here. But until you restart, it's not actually using the Fedora install off your hard drive. So we're just going to go ahead and restart our machine. Upon restart, we can go ahead and start using our Fedora install. If you notice, it's listing the one non-root user we created during the installation. If you want to log in as root, just click on not listed there and type in root and then the root password, and then you'll log you in. In general, it's not a good practice to log in as root for day-to-day -day use. Um, so once you do that, you go ahead and start using our brand new Fedora installation. Go ahead and check out the Fedora store or the app store. It has tons of productivity, development tools, Great utility. So this actually comes with a fully loaded desktop with an office suite and additional tools that you can use to get help you get started right away. So definitely check out the App Store and I hope you enjoy your Fedora installation. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. I hope you give Fedora Linux a try. It's been around for a long time. It's a great product and I hope you enjoy it. All right. I'll see you guys next time and subscribe to get updates. Bye.